Mark, why don't you tell them what they're going to win? Ah, yes. Are you sitting down? Coo you backpack. A coo you backpack can be yours for a review of our show. Mark. It's uh, it's it, exciting, isn't it? Eh? Can you? It's a Mark, exciting backpack. I can't. <laughs> I'm going to put in a review myself. Mark, it's a kafaru pack. No, no, it's a yeah. kuyu. It's a no, kuyu pack. no, Mark, it's it's a kafaru pack. It's a kafaru pack. Aaron, yeah. you know, been doing uh, the podcast with us. Yeah, Aaron, from Aaron, Aaron International. you know, the kuyu, the, ra- the ram thing. He played football, American football, <laughs> NFL, right? <laughs> podcast. I don't okay, know. Aaron was uh. in the military. Not the it, NFL. It, not Rams head, Kif- Rhino. Rhino. Oh, bugger. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, folks, I'm sorry. It's for a Kifaru backpack. A not, Kifaru not a backpack. Kuyu. It's unique I've never today. seen you wearing a flat brim before. And I'm going to be like, that's because it's gay. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you want to sure give away a Kifaru backpack? What do you mean? <laughs> Quality show here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that doesn't mean I'm taking care of meat in the back country from a 400 inch bull. This could be cows or, so this applies to raghorns, 400 inch bulls, <laughs> does, you know, so it's forked horns. You can do it with all of them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so this is for back country meat care. I have a system. Need a tissue. Some get some good at bull, man. Hello, all right, you're listening to the Gritty Bowman, home of gritty bow hunting films, interviews, tall tales, and a wee bit of manly boasting. I'm South Cox, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. <laughs> hey, this is Corey Jacobson, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. We bone and raised outdoors, <laughs> and you've been listening to the Gritty Bowman. <laughs> there you go. I'm Casey. And I'm Jordan. And you're watching... <laughs> The Gritty Bowman. <laughs> if you like the show, please go to our website at grittybowman.com and subscribe to this podcast and tell your mates and pals about us. Do us a favor and please take a moment to leave us a rating or a review on iTunes or on our YouTube channel. Send your questions and podcast ideas to grittybowman at gmail.com. If you're listening to this on iTunes, you can see the video version of this podcast on our website at www.grittybowman.com. All right, folks. Welcome back to the Gritty Bowman Podcast. I have two suckers with me yep. tonight. <laughs> Two buddies who uh, are are glutton for punishment, and they've come back for round two. I feel really uh, stupid about um, losing audio on the last podcast. But tonight, um, Chris and Colin are back to finish uh, talking about blacktail deer and it, and to hear about Chris's, uh, finish the story of, about Chris's big, big buck daddy. So we kind of left off. We talked about... Um, we kind of talked about a bunch of things, but we went into uh, that you had hunted thirty six days last year yep, last for, this, season. for this deer. Now, um, <clears throat> you said you saw. I think you said you saw one shooter buck, and then and that was it. The whole time you were there. Yep, thirty six sets. Uh, one shooter, I believe, November eighteenth. Good buck passed him, and uh, you know you can't kill the buck you want or kill big bucks if you give in and shoot these other deer so yeah so um tell us the story about daddy like <clears throat> how um you know how did you approach it this year compared to last year um what happened uh well i didn't really approach it any different other than uh just kind of moving further up in the draw and setting up in a pinch point, a bottleneck where the canyon kind of funnels together, uh, not far from bedding and above where they go to feed and that kind of deal. So why did you choose that spot? Uh, I didn't have many options at this spot. Uh, it's a kind of a spot for when you set up for the wind, it's got to be an afternoon sit and it's just my own, kind of my only option. You know, I didn't want to bump that deer. Uh, when you're hunting these small pieces of land, if you bump a 
a big old smart buck, there's a chance he's not going to come back for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He might find a hot doe and be gone for the season. So uh, definitely intimidated by this deer and never wanted to bump him and never wanted to get too close. So my tactic was just to kind of wait for him. Too close to his bedding area? Yep. yep. Because you did say you did go in it like every few days yes. all year. So he's yeah. used to your smell. Yep. He's used to you being there. You kick the same trail in, you know, the same, you, you kind of yeah. have your, your path that you walk yeah. and you don't really deviate from that. Yeah. And he just got used to your smell. And yeah, I kind of figured if he stumbled onto me, it was okay. Mm -hmm. Like my theory. But if I busted him or jumped him, I didn't want to spook him out. Mm -hmm. So I would go in, do what I had to do. And if he, uh, you know, if he came in and caught my scent, I'm okay with that as long yeah. as he didn't uh, associate me with any danger. Got so. it. I'm calling. How do you handle it when you go into a tree stand and you sit or ground blind, and um, you know the sun's going down and all these deer walk out, and um, and then you're kind of in your ground blind. That's a tough call. Um, you just flip on that red light. And uh, walk out. I'm I'm a green light. It's a, oh, green light! Huge oh, it's difference. Green light. <laughs> huge difference. No, I uh, I I do use that. I do believe in that. Uh, firmly believe in the green light, red light concept. Um, as far as getting in in and out, but I mean, lots of times, like he's saying, if, if you're building, you know, especially on private ground too, or if you're building that comfort level with the deer themselves, you know, you can usually sneak out of there, get out. I mean, a lot of it too is if I'm right on that that deadline where i'm like i can't you know i can barely see but i don't see anything you know kind of actually what happened with chris too packing up your stuff kind of a thing to try to get out of there before they even show up kind mm -hmm. of a thing try to mm -hmm. sneak out but um you know a friend of ours tonight he's sitting one of my stands tonight and he's like i've got deer all around me what do i do and we're all weighing in on and everyone's got a different response. I mean, a lot of it's just in the moment more mm -hmm. than anything. You know, I, yeah. I I don't like deer to know exactly where I am. I don't like to be pinpointed. You know, maybe they know I'm in the general area, but I don't want them to come in and look up. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what that's what worries me about that. So I'll, lots of times I'll sit there and wait them out hour and a half sometimes if I have to. Yeah, but I try to get out quick because I don't want to be in the tree till 730. <laughs> I, I've sat there plenty of times and my wife will say, where are you? Can't, can't go. Yeah. I'm blocked down. So I've been stuck in the tree a lot. I mean, I don't want to get down and spook them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I tend to wait a while before I climb down. And, um, it's just kind of what you got to do. Uh, at, at some point, though, I'll be like, "All right, it, it just I just got to blow them out," mm -hmm. you know. And ironically, though, I find that uh, I climb down my tree fairly quietly uh, in the dark, and uh, a lot of times they just stand there. Yeah. yeah. Or they come back ten minutes later. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, your camera will tell that story too. Yeah. You know, like we have a another pro staffer on Blacktails named Dakota Cath he uh him and his brother would be hunting this piece of property together and every night he'd go out there and run his quad out to the back end of this field up near the woods where they were hunting mm -hmm. but what it would do was it would they wouldn't associate it with the the tree that you know his brother was in they'd associate it with the quad or whatever and they'd all kind of scatter out give his brother a chance to get out of the tree and sneak out and they're not focusing any of that you know giving right. any negative attention to the stand setup in any way. Right, right. So. Yeah, yeah, I think that works like a charm. I, I, you know, they do that a lot with, like, bear baiting and stuff in Canada. <laughs> They'll cruise in on the four-wheeler. Bear hears it coming a long way off. It, they don't associate it necessarily with danger. Mm -hmm. Throw the bait on there, and they get the guy at the tree stand. He climbs down, they drive out. And that way the bear just is never, like, uh, he comes back for a few minutes later. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not... Uh, I, I, you know, getting, getting deer used to you, um, seems a little bit like cheating guys. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? I don't know. <laughs> is, it, is it? Okay. So this is, this is where I think, you know, cause you'll go into the same concepts with, with, you know, baiting and things mm -hmm. like that. But at the end of the day, 
I work my tail off. You know, I put a lot of money and time into checking religiously, checking my spots and my cameras and all that. I think there's a whole other different work ethic and the work and there's some, something isn't just the actual hunt. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. like they say, oh, it's not hunting. Well, I just worked six months to set this spot up exactly. so it's good for a month. Reaping the rewards finally of something. Yeah, and I mean, the can... bottom line is I'm there to kill an animal mm-hmm. yep. with a legal tactic. And yeah. so. Well, it's funny because um, we get into this. This comes up a lot, right? If you throw uh, some apples out or acorns or, or uh, chestnuts or something for, for these. Yeah, corn. Or deer, corn. And, um, you know, there's a stigma attached to that about baiting, right? And I was telling you guys, my property is, you know, five acres really with some adjoining other acreage with houses on them. They're all five acre parcels though. So they're, they're, it's pretty suburban, you know, but there are some spots where it's pretty thick Mm -hmm. and the deer come running and cruising through there. And, and, uh. My property where I have permission to hunt, that's our land that we own, is really small. It's like, you know, you got five acres. It's not very much, <laughs> no. you know. Um, and uh, and trying to get deer to cruise through there or to spend time on there or increase my odds is, is yeah. pretty It's pretty hard to do. Yeah, no, you just got to create a, uh, a feeding area. So creating a, a habitat where they're drawn to my property I, I did that earlier podcast for for uh, managing um, you know small property for 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 blacktails. Mm-hmm. I think it's just been utterly rewarding. The last I've been doing it for like eight years. I I um, I'm not out there growing any food plots or anything else, but uh, I started putting apples out um, you know once a week for uh, from like uh, late September through december i think it comes from the people that haven't done it and they're just do-gooders and so they they haven't sat for 160 hours at a food source and only seen one deer it's tough well that's what i was gonna say too it's it's sort of like uh um certainly there's there's i've hunted blacktails up in the mountain area the foothills of the cascades and um up near mount hood and when you're hunting up in there, um, you know, I'm not driving up there and putting apples down, right? Yeah. You know, there's just no time. But a lot of those bucks migrate down from the snow. You can get in some some pinch points and some trails, and you can get on some great deer hunting yeah. that way, right? That way. When you're down here in these suburban neighborhoods and you're you're down here in the Willamette Valley where we're at, where I hunt mostly, I don't think those, those deer don't go very far. No. They stay right here on that local property. And we uh, pushed them to where these little spots where they feel completely safe, mm-hmm. and they really don't go outside those spots, and no. I don't think they really need to. No. Unlike a lot of other uh, deer species that will travel quite a distance, yeah. Um, it just seems that blacktail bucks, especially down in here, they don't travel that far. Mm-hmm. They they're pretty homebody ish, and they stay there. And so, <clears throat> and I I figured this out by letting bucks. Pa- passing on younger bucks and waiting to see what happens the next year mm-hmm. and seeing them grow up bigger and then grow up bigger and then grow up bigger each year i let i let them walk and uh and and after watching that for a while yeah i got to see wow there are some there's some really great um you know i have a profound impact on this i used to think that there'd just be some big buck that would just roam on cuz the does are in heat <clears throat> And onto my property and then uh, breed all the does and it's like you never know what monster buck will show up that, that year. Uh, well, it's not really like that. I get a lot of the same deer year after year. Oh, yeah. Now and then, uh, you know, I'll get one or two that I've never seen before, but the great majority of them are bucks that I have a history with. I know them. I've watched them. I know exactly which one's which. They have names. You know, uh, I, I get familiar with them, very familiar with them. Now, before I put apples out, I didn't have any of those deer on my property. I mean, I have one or two pass through. Now I have a whole herd of deer that just, they stay, they hang out and live there all the time. There's, there's deer trails everywhere. I remember that first uh, couple of years I put apples out. I had like a doe and two fawns. 
for two seasons. <laughs> that was it. The same dough and two Vons. That was it. And uh, I remember just having my camera up going, are there any more deer out here? I mean, any? And over time, uh, there were some developments that went on and some other houses that got uh, the land changed a little bit. And I think that increased the habitat a little bit and improved the land. But I started to see a remarkable change in the the deer density out at my place, putting apples out year after year. And uh, so a guy might say, hey, you know, Colin, if you go out in the mountains and you... Um, well, I don't, I don't think it's cool to put apples down because what will happen is you won't really learn deer behavior. You won't really learn what makes blacktails do what blacktails do. You won't really learn, you know, how to hunt them. Now, from my perspective, after putting apples down and actually having them come to my property, I've learned more about blacktails by observing them. And I have lots of film of blacktails. I have people I've talked to that are like, yeah, I've never seen, I've never actually heard one grunt. Oh, I've never seen them fight. I, I've never seen um, a doe mounted. I've never yeah. seen, you know, I see that. St- I've seen all that stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen some serious weird stuff that I'm like, oh, they do that. <laughs> they make that sound. Oh, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. Is something that I've just picked up on the last couple of years with black doe, especially does. Yeah, those chatty Cathys all day to oh, each yeah. other. They are constantly. I was just telling my little brother today about it. I said, "Man, I'm blown away mm-hmm. just at, at how much you could hear. I I would know does were coming, not because I'd hear their feet in the leaves or something. I'd hear them bleating back and forth yep. to each other. Here they come. Yep, yep. It's yeah. the same a, here. Um, <laughs> I being in the tree, you yeah. really hear that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so getting to observe that kind of stuff and seeing them move and chase each other and 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 do all of that i i've learned a lot about behavior and and because i've had the opportunity to to be there now that said <clears throat> i still have yet to shoot a monster blacktail buck like like a real giant and there have been a couple out where i'm at that are that have been very big and i've never been able to get them it'll happen and i'm that's what i'm going for but but Having the apples out, um, it, one of the things that I find kind of interesting is, I, I've said this before, our neighbor has five apple trees. And they're, these apple trees, I swear they're 100 years old. I mean, and they're monstrous. And they produce some insane apples. <laughs> and it's like one starts in August and the last one goes to like December. So they just it's just an endless supply of apples during this period. And... Uh, I know blacktail behavior. Oh, yeah. They're over there at my neighbor's place eating <laughs> yeah. apples every freaking night. That's it. Yeah. That's their behavior. So oh, yeah. I was like, I watched that, and I was like, you know, you know how I can do, how I can s- create a great feed source? I can put apples out. Oh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't change if I was hunting over his apples in his yard. But there's a stigma attached to if you actually put the apples out yourself. Yeah. I think a lot of it comes from, you know, like I said, people that haven't done it or just do-gooders. I mean. Well, I think the corn pile guys, too, you know, like uh, guys down in the south and stuff. It's like, you you hunt off a corn pile? It doesn't matter. I hunt off a field. And I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) We stripped all the corn off the field and we dumped it in a pile. Now we're the bad guys. You know, right, that, right. That, some, that kind of concept always just seemed a little a little off to me a bit. Blacktails um, are tough to hunt regardless. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what if I was going to say. If you're hunting food or if you're is, hunting tree, um, if you're still hunting, ground hunting, they're just tough. It doesn't matter. That's what I was going to say is um, outside of apples, I've really never found any other food source that blacktail are particularly fond of that they would go out of their way to go and get. Mostly what I see them do, if you put anything else out, because I tried for a few years before before I, I started doing apples, and it was like, because I'd watch all these whitetail shows, you know, and they'd have all their property, and they would build this, like, deer mecca paradise, and then all these bucks would be running around, and they would just get to farm the land and see Spray it. Spray the leaves. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> They're just, like, having a blast, right? And I'm like, 
man, I got property. Why not? Why not make it into uh, a really nice deer habitat and, you know, and see what kind of deer I would attract. And, and, uh, well, it didn't really work from blacktails. Yeah. You, you, you notice nobody's putting food plots in blacktail country. <laughs> they, tr- they try. <laughs> I know people that have, and they have failed miserably. Yeah, <laughs> they, they might they would as, as soon eat a blackberry bush as they would your your <laughs> your corn and soybeans. Yeah, I'm you like know? man, do you see how green everything is around? Yeah, yeah. You, they, you know? they they really don't care. I swear, I, when I envision when I can't find a blacktail buck, I envision that he's he's. Uh, He's ten feet into a blackberry cluster, and and he and he stands up and he eats around him to keep the cave intact, and then lays <laughs> back down. That that's kind of my. That's where he is, uh, and, and and to go anywhere else because is a little too. Uh, and he crawled in there through right. a tunnel, and he's not coming out. Uh, his food's right there, you know, and water. He doesn't need to go anywhere, and so um, it's kind of. Um, it, but I have noticed that. They will travel for apples, though. Yeah. They'll, they'll especially does and fawns, especially young fawns. They they hit the apples hard, and um, so that's been um, that's been sort of my food source. And then we've hinge cut and done some other stuff to provide some bedding areas, and and uh, and it's a really nice place. And we've got some bedding and some food source, and and uh, it's been really cool to watch blacktail. Uh, the whole group just kind of grow up in there, and and uh, and uh, it's been a, a it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So, you know, when you go out and you're hunting, Daddy, you know, when I was kind of being facetious when I said you go out and you know you get them used to your scent, it's kind of cheating. Well, um, I feel like it's so hard to kill a blacktail buck to begin with. Oh yeah. So if that's cheating. I'm going to do it every day, uh, something <laughs> like that, because um, I haven't figured out how to do it very well o- yeah. on on certain acreage, right? On certain properties, it's it's like uh, it's very small. If they've never seen my scent and I never go into that place and I go in, muck about and leave, that's going to be like totally foreign to them. Like, whoa, what what just happened? Why did this come oh, yeah. into this little five acre? OK, I'm out. I mean, you're in his bedroom, right? That's one of the reasons why I never wanted to push him or go deeper. Yeah. Intimidated, you know. So, um so basically as you went in there each each uh how often did you go in? Every 3 days starting in March. Checking those those uh Can you see that? Colin? No. Can't. I'm Don't. just gonna it's it's red, so it should be fine. Um here, let's get your mic a little bit closer if you can. Yeah, there we go. Coffee's way. It's super directional. Better? Yeah. Yeah, the last two years I left cameras out all year, you know. Uh-huh. So I knew exactly when they dropped. Their antlers. When I knew, I knew exactly when they dropped their fawns, so I could go back and. Well, their fawns are a week old, and so now I know when they got bred, and all that. So I mean, I was. We did some shed hunting in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we, I was in there. You know. Every three to four days. Yeah. Since March. So how did it go down? How'd you how'd you get him? Because you know you were you persistence. Were <laughs> it was a dark rainy night. <laughs> per- persistence. Uh, I think if it, if anything for for a blacktail like I've been after this buck I call Lefty. This is my fourth year trying to kill him, and I've had my opportunities, and um, they just I just didn't get him done get it done, and um, I haven't seen him this year. Yeah, and we're what's today November eleventh. November eleventh, yeah. and and I haven't seen him all of October, all of November. The bucks are chasing right now. Just now, I'm getting lots of little bucks, mm-hmm. three and a half year olds, and it's you. You look at it, and you, you just got to tell yourself, "There's no way he's keeping a doe for much longer." There's yeah, not the last chance. three days, I've got bucks at ten in the morning, one in the morning, three in the afternoon, you know, all day. <sighs> 
I haven't seen. Uh, I have six cameras out there. I haven't seen uh, any any bucks since October tenth. Any any older bucks? Any shooters? Yeah, just some spikes. They got to be somewhere. And, and this is the They're first year by. I've had this kind of gap. Yeah, like really long gap. I'm just finding kind of the same thing. I've had a bunch of bucks. I was watching all through yeah. October. Haven't found one of them. Haven't found any of them yet, except for like one photo of them passing by. Yeah, you know, lots of people say that the food thing is cheating or whatever else. Very rarely, I've shot one buck off of like <laughs> baiting. Other than that, it's just been doe, and I've caught him on the outskirts or something. Yeah, yeah. Most of those mature bucks hang back, anyways. So, well, that's what I've been doing the last couple of years. Is I hunt uh, between. You know, on some some trail in, in the wooded areas, coming into where the food source is, yeah. hunting over the food source doesn't work well at See, all. See, this year I'm like 300 yards above about I think six to eight apple trees. Yeah, yeah. And so at some point they're coming down this canyon to get 300 yards below me by dark to eat. Yeah. It just happened to be, I mean, that's just the spot I had to hunt, and that's just the way it was. I mean, I don't know. So when you went in, um, it was a stormy night. Yeah, I started hunting. The uh, first hunt of the year was somewhere around October 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, got in there and uh, just kind of got the blind situated, got my camera gear set up, got the chair set up, how everything was going to fit, and uh, just had a few does, fawns come in come down past me a little buck right at dark got mm -hmm. to observe them see what was going on and uh you know honestly was just getting ready and getting dialed in for what i thought was going to be another 35 days you know <laughs> in the blind uh so i hunted a few more days i think uh three more days during yeah. that week evenings when i got home got in there for two three hours at a time nothing you know does fawns whatever and then uh, October 30th came, I was heading down into town, so I swung by my spot and I pulled my card. And the big buck was there at 722 with a doe, and he went up the hill. And that's the closest I've had him to daylight. It's probably only 15 or 20 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, if I would have been in the blind that morning, it may have been shooting light. I don't know the times or whatever, but it was close. So that was the closest I'd had him the shooting light this year. Yep. And... uh so I was like, you know what? I think I'm I'm gonna go sit this evening. I'll you know I'll give it a go, and if not, I'll get in there in the morning, hour before daylight, sit in the dark for an hour, and spend my morning in there. So, talked to Todd and Colin, and they kind of got me pumped up for the afternoon hunt, and it was freaking nasty. It was a nasty day. Uh, got into the blind about three o'clock. Got set up. Got dialed. Got ready and sat for three hours, and not a single deer. So I was actually contemplating if I even would shoot at a deer or mm -hmm. shoot at the big buck because it was pouring rain. It was, you know, 20, 30 minutes from dark. And you're worried about uh, losing blood trail. Yep. I've, I've, I've lost a deer when it started raining before a buck, a good buck. And it's a real issue when you're dealing with blacktails in the Northwest. Oh, yeah. Especially, with the, especially in the evening for me, you know. It's like, do I go after him? Do I mark it? You know, all this stuff goes through your head. And if it's pouring rain, you know, it's like uh, you you might push him yeah. if he's not down. See, I did that. Just... That's the buck I lost. I hit good in the front. And uh, when I shot him, it started raining. I'm like, no. So I got on him right away. Good blood. Within 100 yards, I jumped him. Pool of, butt, uh, pool of blood, a bed. He was gone. Never found him. So that right there kind of screwed me up for this whole evening hunt in the rain thing i had the same scenario because i mean same situation almost and when when i saw found out you know when he had shot his buck oh my gosh we gotta get there you know yeah time's of the essence when it's like that you know right right yeah that night was bad uh so it rolled around it was six o'clock i'm like you know what i'm done i'm gonna uh i'm gonna pack up and i'll just you know hunt tomorrow mm-hmm Pulled my camera gear, moved my bow, put my quiver on my bow, and I was ready to go. And I actually had just leaned forward in the chair like this, 
and I caught movement out of the corner of my eye, about 10 yards. So I kind of just sat back, and I looked, and it was a huge-bodied deer. Well, his head was behind some brush, or its head was behind some brush, so I didn't know. Took a few steps, and it popped out, and I just saw this giant rack. I'm like, oh, my gosh, no way. And so I got my... Why, Colin, has this not (laughs) happened to me? It'll happen, yeah. It'll happen. Like, <laughs> it will happen. So I got my bow back over in front of me, and I got my release on. I got it on my D-loop, and I look up again to double-check. You know, I'm, I only want to shoot one deer, and so I double-check, and I can see just a huge four. And yeah. it's the only four-point I have there, so I knew, you know. Well, he walked out. He continued on about 16 yards, and at 20 yards, he took a hard right and turned completely broadside. And then I looked again. I knew it was, you know, the buck I'm after, Daddy. And he looked the other direction. And so I kind of leaned forward out from behind my screen, and I look, and I'm like, holy crap, this guy is looking the other way. (laughs) Well, it's pouring rain right now, And it is pouring rain. Like I said, it was, you know, half hour before dark. And when you're up in that canopy, it is getting dark. So Mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of called myself, and, you know, I knew this was my chance, so I... I wasn't that nervous, and I drew, and uh, I leaned forward, settled my pin, and shot, hit him. Knew I hit him. Uh, didn't know exactly where I hit him, but he bolted freaking hard right and was gone just like that. Yeah. Yeah. In the pouring rain, I'm like, man, no way. Did this really just happen? <laughs> you know, one of my worst fears, shooting at dark or bef- right before dark. But in, you're pretty sure rain. you got him where you wanted to hit him, or... Uh, well, you know, you always have those doubts. You're using a lighted knock because it is legal now. Yeah, but I don't think it's legal until. Well, they're having a. They're trying to make an amendment to start it up at the end of November. Yeah. Oh, really? But no, that's... I wasn't. I had to search for the. Arrow. Oh, okay. Okay. It would have been nice though. That's for sure because it was a pass through. I'd been able to. Walk. I'm not using them because you know I don't want to have an advantage. Yeah. <laughs> or the extra <laughs> finding your arrow. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah no so as soon as i shot him i mean it went you know crack and he freaking he was gone yeah gone i seen the direction he went and i you know i was kind of in shock so i sent out a couple texts real quick to call and then our other buddy todd i knew i was going to need help on this Mm -hmm. and so i jumped out of the blind and i ran over to where he was standing i looked back at the blind i lined it all up and i'm looking i'm looking i've got to find this arrow it is yeah pouring and there I found the arrow. There it was. Pass through. Pass through, stuck in the ground. And uh, pulled it out real quick, looked. It was, you know, p- good red blood, perfect red blood. And uh, so I rushed the arrow back to the blind to get it out of the rain just in case I need to do inspect it later, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of a anal tracker, so mm-hmm. that could make a difference later on knowing oh, yeah. where you hit. So I kind of just waited. I was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. It was raining so freaking hard, you know, I'm like, man, I'm losing blood, I'm losing blood, I'm losing blood. So I did make it up the trail about 10 yards, and there was some blood. There was good blood in the leaves. So actually, I took my hat off, and I covered the blood up so the rain wouldn't wash it away, just in case I needed to inspect that some blood. Some MacGyver stuff right there. Yeah, seriously. And so I took a few more steps. Dude, in the rain, I'd have kept my hat on, but whatever. Dude. Yeah. I was more worried about. I was <laughs> more worried he's about. He's on a different level. Thirty-six right now. days. Yeah. 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 Okay, I was more no worried idea. about that deer than get my head wet. I was already soaked. I mean, it was raining so hard, and so I did make it up the trail about another five yards. There was some more blood, so mm-hmm. I marked that with some pink tape or pink ribbon that I always pack. Yep. And uh, I made it back to the blind. Sent out a couple more texts to I think Kim and my dad and uh, actually Nick Schmidt and Phelps. Yep. Uh, Nick told me months ago that if I shot that deer, he would drop anything he's doing and make the hour and 15 minute drive and come take photos. So that Good was, man. that was cool. <laughs> man of his word. Yeah. So I wait, <laughs> I went, I went down to the truck and, uh, waited probably 20 minutes for Colin and Todd to come. They showed up. Uh, I was a disaster. I was a wreck. Was a, a pacing mess. <laughs> 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 just back and forth 
uh, in the drive. Yeah, mumbling, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. stuttering. So I thought he was going to grab him like, hey, listen, we're going to go get him. We're going to get him, you know? So. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. Um, shooting a, a blacktail buck in the Northwest, it's like, I don't know about you, but I've I've lost a couple. Um, one of my, the biggest buck I've ever shot, I never found. And uh, it it tends to happen um, more often than not because, you know, if you don't hit them just right and they don't drop within yeah. 50, 70 yards, they will they disappear, first of all, at like 30 yards. You know, you can't see more than 30 yards in any direction in a lot of the areas no, where, was, where we're hunting. They're gone. And beyond that 30, it's a wall of brush. And so once they pop through that, it's like, Okay, where did they go? And finding them is if there's not a good blood trail. Yeah, it's it's tough. You, I mean, sometimes you just end up doing grid searches. You, you know, right no, I, I don't want to lose any yeah. deer. I've, I mean, like you, I've lost deer. I've lost a buck before, and uh, it, I, it screwed me up. I mean, I, honestly, I was when I was hunting elk this year with Anthony. You would see seven hundred yards, man. I mean, we. His, he wanted a bull elk. We were like, well, there he is, 500 yards away. We just ran him down until he <laughs> yep. was like chasing a kudu in Africa. Yeah. Um, we, it's a totally different situation, you know. Here, um, when I take a shot on a deer, on a buck that I've been tracking for years and years, and when I take that, any, any buck, really, any, any blacktail buck I'm taking aim on, I make sure that it's a shot I can make oh, yeah. every day of the week with my eyes closed and um and and i'm and i'm i'm waiting for that perfect shot angle i mean i just i'm not there's uh he's got to drop yeah within you know my goal is to have him drop within 50 yards of being of where i shot mm -hmm. where 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 i where where the arrow hit him and that's uh that's my goal yeah and well, when you, i hunt you have to mule be deer a, a and good i hunt tracker yeah, when I hunt mule deer, when here. I cut hunt elk, you know, I'm not necessarily thinking about that. I'm looking for a kill shot. Yeah, that's it. I'm looking yeah. for a kill shot, and I'm thinking this is this is a kill shot. Here, I'm thinking not just a kill shot. I'm thinking a a shot that will drop him. Oh yeah, and if he doesn't drop, will leave massive amounts of blood. Yep. <laughs> no, it's constantly in my head when I'm hunting here, you know, valley or Pacific around here, or whatever. That mm -hmm. you, I mean. Obviously, you want to make the best shot every time, but yep. you don't want to track animals in you know October, November around here. No. Not deer, especially. Um, I heard Scott Haugen on the uh, on the Rich Outdoors podcast, which was awesome, and uh, he was telling sharing all his experience with blacktails, and um, you know he talked about how his you know he has just tremendous success in heavy, heavy rainstorms and and heavy. Heavy rain, uh, chasing blacktails, both before a storm, after a storm, during a storm, <laughs> all of it. It's like just, just it's good stuff. Oh, that's the that's my prime time. If if I have a chance, I want to be just hanging on for dear life in a tree because <laughs> usually there's a buck moving because of it. Yeah, fifteen minutes before he came in, I was actually thinking, you know what? It's raining too hard. I don't want to shoot. I'm done. Yeah, but. You know, he came in and gave me the shot, <laughs> so I did it. So, I did so, it. so, so you're nervous. You're you're pan, you're, yeah, you're kind of pacing. I was back freaking and forth. out. It was pouring. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm soaking wet, and I'm actually thinking that, you know, by the my pen was where it needed to be when I shot. So I felt the shot was good. I found yeah. the arrow. Good blood. But still, you know, like I said, the voices, you got your hands on them. the voices are creeping <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're not going to find him. He made it 200 yards into the thicket. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, you're going to be looking for three days. I'm like, oh, man. So, yeah, I wasn't super confident. I actually thought, you know, it could be an all night recovery that we were going to have to just grid search. Yeah. So we get up to where uh, where I shot and did I show, I can't remember if I showed you yeah I brought you guys to the blind I showed you the arrow yeah you said go go to the arrow and peek in there and, and yeah, take a look at the, the blood you think. yep so we did that I just kind of explained to him you know gave him the scenario of what happened what I saw where he ran and we made it over there and I 
picked up the hat, showed him the blood that was left, and yeah. I said, he just took off this way, side-hilling it. I don't know what happened. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know where he is or what happened. So I think Colin got up above me on a trail, and Todd went below me on a trail, and then I stayed on the main trail. We just kind of side-hilled it. That was the direction the deer ran. Yep. And uh, within 15 yards, there he was, piled up in the ferns. That's close. So it was, you guys drove all the way down there, got yeah. there. Flying. Uh, flying. And uh, you went 15 yards? Yeah. Yep. How would you it feel was, about that, Colin? <laughs> you know what? Was it a letdown? No. <laughs> no. Because once you saw it there, I don't think I've ever ran out of my house so fast. <laughs> I grabbed my duck hunting jacket you see in the video because I was going to go duck hunting the next day. Mm-hmm. And I grabbed it and went screaming out of the house and said, Sorry, honey. Todd and, and Colin got in trouble. Way. Todd got in trouble. That's why you buy a nice couch. That's the, <laughs> that's the key right there. No, it it uh, it was you know what it was like when you when you like this buck is not just a buck. It's not you know this is the buck. You've never seen anything like it. So that's we we knew what we were going to look for. Yeah. So was, uh, let let's see this guy. It was pretty exciting. I don't have my other camera. My my camera women um, couldn't make it tonight. So um, oh, he has some sage in his horn. Let's get that out of there. <laughs> That's what everyone's gonna say, right? <laughs> well, I've should, already heard this, that this, this, he's a this mule is an deer. awesome right, mule deer, goodness. dude. Yeah, dude, check him out. The ferns don't lie. No, he's a uh, deep tined, just a beautiful deer, man. So what was his score? Uh, we Todd Ruff scored him uh, gross 153 plus and net 151 and six eighths or something. And how old do you think he is? Well, we've my cousin hunted him in 2011 and he was a good four point then. Here's his sheds from 2011. So he was, uh, you know, this is a great valley buck right here. Oh, dude. That's about like the size of the buck I'm trying to kill right now. (laughs) That's the buck I'm going for. When we we got pictures of him. And and when you see these two, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, when we got these pictures in 2011, we freaked out. We were like, dude, that is a stud. And those are his sheds from uh, 2013. Here, let me see these. 2013. Yep. So you don't have 14? Nope, I don't have 12 or 14s. I don't know where they are. Dude, what kind of loser are you? (laughs) (laughs) That's cool you found the sheds. Yeah, actually, my cousin Paul found these and gave them to me. He was super awesome about it. Dude, these are just studly, man. I mean, he's he's a beast right here. Yeah. Two years ago. I think. So that's a question, you know, I have is how big, I mean, a lot of times you hear, uh, you know, by six, seven years old, they're they're regressing. What what do you what do you think? This tells me. I mean, we've you know obviously went back and forth about it, but at minimum, he was three and a half here, mm-hmm. and so that would make this seven and a half. I mean, this that's not that it doesn't look like a three year old. This could me, be you know. four and a half. Yeah, that's got to be four. I'm thinking. I mean, yeah. So if this is four and a half, that he's eight and a half here. So you're thinking he's yeah eight and a half years. Uh, that's and if he's eight and a half here, he grew from when he was six and a half. He put on some tine length and mass. This is six and a half. This is eight and a half. That just goes to show, you know, um, you know. I mean, obviously, some will reach a man. He's got some mass too. So they'll reach a size where they. Um, and he's perfect as far as symmetrical. I mean, yeah. he doesn't have any little kickers. No. No, I mean, he, he's uh, you he's look, one of a kind, dude. You look at him head on, and you're just like, whoa. Like, he's so symmetrical. Mm-hmm. I think there's, uh, Todd says, there was an inch and a half of deductions. So with this time, with this bit missing, I mean, if you, if, uh, that's pretty. It actually helps him does in it? the long run, I would think. Right, as far as a net yeah. score, it would help because if, if I remember correctly too, if you look on that other on the other shed, yeah, there, and the pitchers, that time quite a ways up, up there and hooked. Oh, no, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, old daddy so this, did us some favors. Yeah, this is uh, 
It's it, a lot more I, equal now. What I think is cool about this is just the character, you know, having the broken tip, you know. It's just cool. So, so you know, I heard Scott Haugen say something in regards to that, saying that these bucks, when they get old, when they get old, they, I mean, a black tail can can still just put on some size. I think that um, I've thought this for a long time because we live in the Northwest. Food sources are plentiful. I mean, the coldest it gets. I mean, it doesn't even freeze. There's there's hardly any snow, you know. And and when there is snow, they come down from those elevations, yeah. and, and they can hit. And these, in some uh, areas, there's no predators. There, there's really not. I mean. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, Coast Range, you know, yeah. Cascades, there's predators. Some of these suburban bucks, like he was, you know, a, mm-hmm. a local valley buck, he had to watch out for cars. Yeah. Other hunters. Have, have you seen um, coyotes, cougars, or anything yeah. on your film? Yeah, a ton of coyotes. No cats, uh, no big cats, no no cougars, a few bobcats. I am. Um, there's a huge coyote problem in the suburban areas, mm, you yeah. know, because nobody, there's no predator control. I mean, there's yeah. just packs of them everywhere. Yeah. I, I see a ton of coyotes right now. Um, more coyote, coyotes this year than I've ever seen. But uh, I have a ton of photos with the deer and the coyotes together. Oh, really? Yep. Just hanging out. I got a picture of a coyote eating apples. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I, think I have like two coyotes eating apples and a big in a in a 3-year-old buck just eating apples next to him. <laughs> I got about the same like I apples. got one that he's actually it's a it's a 4-year-old and his ears are pinned yeah. pinned back looking back at it, but they're only about 5 feet Yeah, from this each other. this buck is kind of posturing a little <laughs> bit, but he didn't look worried at all. Then yeah. later he's like chilling and both the coyotes are on there. I just don't know if a coyote there. is going to take down a Good mature buck. I I don't think they're going to. I mean, a fawning f- issue. Fawn, than right, I do too. Yeah. And weak does. I do too. I do too. So yeah, I I think they can can grow to be ten years old. And well, I know just of a couple some... bucks within the last last year and the year before that a buddy killed and uh, ODFW aged them at nine and a half. Yeah, and they were super nice bucks. Yeah, good yeah. mass like. Awesome it, character. It, it, it's, it makes you think, you know, if you shoot a buck at four years old, right? You think sometimes four or five years old, he's done. But as daddy shows, he's not done. No. And there's a lot of, there, there could be some serious growth. That said, sometimes you just, you're a forked horn. And, yeah. and, you're, and you're not really any bigger than you were at 10 as you were at five. Yeah. There's a lot of deer, a lot of blacktails don't stack on that uh, the that, points the points that you're gonna get. I mean, the buck I killed a while back we call it Pitchfork, and he was a four by four the year before. He dropped a tine and added added heavier mass mm-hmm. and a cooler. And in my opinion, it actually came up with a cooler frame. Yeah, cooler set of cooler rack in the long run than he did. You know, the two years I watched him before that. Yeah, my cousin killed a hog uh, three or four years ago, fork at horn, just a stud, and I think it was aged at five and a half. Yeah, I missed a nice fork at horn once. Um, uh, big old mature buck. Um, that's just what he was. Um, so I, I want to get into a couple other things, but here's Daddy. When you came came on him that night, like yeah. After on him and knowing him for so long and all that, how did it feel when you actually? No, uh, it was it was weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never I've never had that kind of experience before. Mm-hmm. An animal that I've known about for so long and then hunted for so hard and then literally like this last past year, I kept my camera up for the whole year, so I knew the day he dropped, the afternoon he dropped. I checked my camera. He was there in the morning, both his antlers. He came back 12 hours later. He didn't have antlers. And so I knew the day he dropped. I knew the day that he started just having nubs. Yeah. So it was weird walking up on him, you know. Uh, a lot of respect. Just bittersweet. Uh, yeah. little awkward, you know, kind of like that I had disrespected him somehow. That's the kind of respect I had for this animal that then I killed him. It, it, it hit me that, wow, I, 
I kind of disrespected him by killing him, but you know, it was a uh, it was a pretty proud it's, moment. It was cool to have Colin and Todd there. It's a lot of emotions, dude. Because I've, I've all sh- emotions. People think that hunters don't care. I mean, I don't know. I've, sh- I've know. shot I've shot a I've shot a number of bucks that I watched through the years that I then you know y- you have a, a fondness for yeah um oh, yeah. and you you see them mature and and when you shoot one of those bucks at least for me um it's been uh it 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 surprised me yeah um how how I felt about it like well, the like, outside world isn't there with you so it's hard to show that to them later on i mean they see the pictures and you know people say that don't hunt they see your uh your harvest photos or your kill Mm -hmm. photos or whatever Mm -hmm. but they're not there in the woods when you walk up on that animal they don't they don't know what's going on they don't feel that and they're not there to share it with you so it's hard to you know like well and and i think sometimes it's just like yes it's this elation like you found them but at the same time there's that okay in some ways it reminds me of like the day after christmas when you're a kid yeah it's like christmas yeah it's approaching right and you then you get all the gifts and the next day it's like now what whoa <laughs> you know it's yeah. like it's awesome yeah but it's over yeah, yeah. you know it's like uh, wow i mean it's it, it and so it's sort of like uh i, I it sort of feels like that as an adult yeah. now here a here i no when when i when i saw him and i found him and i i said I don't know exactly what I said, but I said, you guys, he's here, or I found him. Yeah. He's down or something, and we all looked. We high-fived. We hugged or whatever, and then it was a blast of different emotions, and then it went quiet and kind of, you know, and finally, I kind of just, uh, you know, I leaned down, touched him on the head, and just kind of said my thanks, and then uh, it was just kind of quiet, and Todd was like, dude, grab him you yeah. know show us touch <laughs> he, him he didn't even know yeah. that, that was the craziest part is like he was still still so taken back that this was him and that he was down on the ground that he hadn't even put his hands on him yet everyone yeah. else runs up and just grabs on and for him he just kind of had to step back for a second and just be like take it this in. is it this is over this is yeah. done before he even grabbed him that was uh it's a little different than killing an animal that you have no history with mm-hmm. you know? right and and i'll be honest i mean i like to go to some property or to the mountain and shoot a buck that's not one of my bucks you oh, know yeah. what i mean like yeah. if i have a preference yeah. i'd rather just watch the deer on my property yeah just watch them all year and then go shoot one somewhere else <laughs> is that weird no 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 cause, i mean there you will eventually build a connection to to these deer. I mean, that's the thing. You're spending enough time. You're checking the camera enough. You're I'm putting so all this time. I'm so curious in too. Like, I wonder what he's going to do next year. For three years, How I never he's even grow uh, the, the year after that. Where w- what his behavior? If he's going to continue to be really aggressive like this, or if he's going to yeah. For three years, I never even thought about hunting this deer. You know, I was just happy knowing he was there. I was yeah. totally fine. This year, we were just dogging on him hard about like you got to get in there. He's going to regress and all that kind of a thing. And then when we started seeing the photos, we're like, uh, I think he's bigger. Yeah. The, the <laughs> velvet, the velvet, uh, Whoa. the velvet photos in August. How old are you? Is this you're thing like, again? wow. Yeah. It was unreal. His forks were deeper. He, you could tell you he brought on more mass. It's just like, my goodness. I've already had comments, you know, and just straight up matter of fact, that is not a black tail. That yeah, that's why deer. I made that sage joke. I know. That was a complete joke earlier, but um, yeah, there's no two ways about it. This is this is a black. It's as Willamette Valley as it comes. Exactly. I mean, there's yeah. just no, uh, there's no, there's no, no, there's not even any doubt or any question. No. <laughs> be quiet. I mean, be quiet with people, those people. With those people. Uh, bench league comments. <laughs> yeah. They're they're. I mean, it's big though. I mean, no, it's stupid just, big. That's why I don't say come across them like that. Nope. So, um, uh, I guess, you know, sneaking in there on this buck like that, shooting him, um, now what are you going to do? Uh, chase uh, is over, dude. I mean, yeah, now no, the, cha- the chase is over. It's awkward. It's kind of weird, you know, like, uh, over the weekend, I didn't, 
I didn't go hunt this last weekend. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I still have a late archery tag, and I'm going to find a uh, a non-valley buck, a big non-valley buck to kill. <laughs> this sucker's going to... He's, he's going to luck out and shoot something bigger, you know, off the mountain. You never know. Persistence. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what I was saying, you know, telling him. He's like, what do I do? I was like, I was like you're going to wake up tomorrow, and you're going to go... Just do it again. Yeah. You know, that's what that's what drives you. The chase. That's what it's all about. That's why there's that remorse there. Cause you're just like Yeah, I don't have to go kill another deer this year. Yeah. I'm 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 fine, but I'm gonna go hunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna go get in the woods. I've gotten to the point right now where <clears throat> I I um I don't want to shoot a deer unless it's of a certain age class. And I, I don't really even consider it trophy hunting. It's just um I'd rather watch them grow. Yeah, me too. Than uh, than shoot them. Well, you're also doing, in my opinion, you're doing the best thing you can for your population and for, I mean, flat out, the scenery only gets better if you are able to pass on these deer. You know, it's fun watching. You know, you, like right now, I got a more three and a half year old deer than I could shake a stick at. But mm-hmm. next year, that's going to be a lot of fun. You know, yeah. that's that's where you're going to be at the following year. I, I I thought maybe I'd ask you guys, what is the uh, your blacktail your your um, your worst blacktail hunting failure? Where the big one got away last year? Uh, <laughs> a f- few really? y- is that fresh? Huh? Oh, it's fresh. All right. Yeah. A few a few years back, I. Had a real nice four point, a cool looking buck. Uh, the first failure was I got cold about nine forty five in the morning. Mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared. My feet were cold. That's pretty early. <laughs> yeah, a, that's still uh, you got a long day. <laughs> it was it was late November and uh, I was cold. I hadn't seen nothing, and all I could think about was warming my feet up and hot soup. <laughs> <laughs> what I hear is. I'm a pansy. It's like a Campbell's <laughs> commercial. <laughs> it got, hey, it got to the point where I had to take my boots off and shove them in my bag, in my backpack, because they were just freezing. Anyway, mm-hmm. but yeah, I wanted hot soup. I wanted to go home, so I did. Went home, ate lunch, got some hot soup, warmed up. Walking back in, I come around the corner to my blind. There the four point is, standing there, 24 yards from my blind. That's when I learned the 10 to 2 trick during peak rut. You want to be in the tree or the blind during 10 to 2 peak rut. So he busted. So for seven days, I sat in that blind. On the seventh day, here comes some does. Here he comes. Right behind him. They come up to about 24 yards from the blind. The does are feeding. He turns broadside and he sniffs a doe's butt. And I'm like, oh. Dude, you're going on the wall. <laughs> I am going to be a freaking stud. I'm going to be a hero. You're done. I'd never practice out of my blind. I'd never practice shooting from a chair. So, 24 <laughs> yards. <laughs> That's a little cocky. A little yeah. arrogant. No. A little presumptuous. 24 yards. Draw back. Go to draw. Yeah. Arm hits here. Changes my anchor point. 24 yards. One foot over his back. Wow, that's a big miss. Yep. That's a huge miss. And Fall so, back in the chair. Pretty much wanted to cry. And he bolted? Oh, he was gone. Never seen him again. Wow. And so that's probably <laughs> my one of my... That Ep- was a double epic failure. Double, epic epic sticks with double you. failure on the same <laughs> deer. Going home too soon and not practicing how you're going to you know, hunt. Which now I do. I I shoot from yeah. a tree stand at home. I got oh, a tree yeah. stand in the tree. It you know it changes everything. And shooting from a chair, you know, yeah. I shoot from my blind this year. I every day for the last uh, three weeks. Well, since elk season, basically, yeah. Leading up to this late hunt, I was shooting from my blind. I had an extra blind at home. Yeah, I think you have to. I think you got to do that. I shoot from uh, from the uh, tree, and I I shoot into a deer decoy so I can kind of mm-hmm. see the angles that yep. I want to hit. Yeah. All right, definitely, Colin. Definitely different uh, where you want to aim from uh-huh. the tree on an animal. Yep. Colin. 10.30 a.m. 
last year. Southern Oregon could hear feet tromping through the leaves. Hooves or the feet? right? F- hooves, sorry. Hooves, okay. You're right. Um, Bigfoot? <laughs> I was, I was like, <laughs> oh, man. you got other hunters on yeah, the way? Oh, yeah, no, uh, hooves going through the uh, through the leaves, and I look to the right, and here's a doe, and then here's a buck pushing behind. Yeah, about a one the high thirties. Uh, three by four Woo! guards, pig, cruising through, and I'm trying to figure out a window for him to stop, and he comes down by a big, kind of like a, a big pine, and I <laughs> and I draw back, and I'm trying to stop him, and he can't hear me because he's so caught up in her. Finally, I'm like, blah, <laughs> you know, to stop him, and he hits the brakes, and I've got about this much of his vitals now. Of still available, and the rest is behind the tree. And I'm like, we're gonna hug her tight. <laughs> and <laughs> I hugged her too tight. <laughs> and I still look at that tree from my stand. I use the same st- same stand spot. I would, I would have to move because that would halt. I sit there and look at that tree w- all day long. <laughs> I would shoot it again for yeah. sure. <laughs> Just I I'd gotta, cut that tree down, man. <laughs> I took a picture. And uh, I you said, stick I just that arrow in the tree, or right in the tree. Oh, I mean, it wow. just banked on the like this much, and I uh, see. I, I'd have, I'd have hit him. I'd have hit the. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah, my dad said, "Are you sure you missed?" And I and I just sent him a picture of my arrow in the tree. So I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a rough go. He and he circled back up again, and followed her right into me. Mm-hmm. He spooked for a second, and uh, my wind shifted and was going right at him. He had enough. It's too too much going on, and he bailed, and she stuck around. So, I was in a tree stand um, hunting this buck that I'd been after for a couple of years, and uh, big, wide, four-by-four four with a drop on one side, and then, like, eye, eye guards that were, like, you know, six inches, just some Jeez. crazy weird eye guards. And he didn't have a lot of mass, like, or a lot of time length on the fours. I mean, they were just, he was a little, little rack, but a lot went into the drop and a lot went into the time. <laughs> oh, man. So he was super cool looking, kind of like how the blacktails are, right? They're just kind of, you get some bizarre, unique antler yeah. stuff. So I was really jacked about this buck, and um, he comes. He, he, you know, it's late. I've been hunting probably, I probably spent 10 days in the stand all from morning till dark. Um, and this buck comes, he comes trotting after this doe. It's, it's about an hour before dark. He's comes trotting in and I got him, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. He's totally into this doe. And I try to stop him like you and try to stop and try to, now I, I'm much louder when I just try to stop him. I like pretty much yell at him because <laughs> they just. They, they won't stop. They don't stop. <laughs> yeah. I've had to yell just like you. Yeah. I, I, I just yelled, yelled hey. hey. Yep. And he said, Whoa, hey. And they just, then they stop. Yep. And if I'm like, bah, bah, yep. bah, they just keep on, I just know. Keep on going. <laughs> Every grunt you do gets louder and louder. Yeah, it, totally. <laughs> and, it just, and they they stop for a second like, what? And then they just go. So uh, yelling at them worked better. Yep. And so... He's coming in, and I anyway, I yell, I yell, I you know, I make my noise, but mah, 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 and he won't stop. And finally, I you know, I'm getting, I, I yell, and he takes like two steps and stops. Well, now where where I had him kind of broadside, he had turned, and now he's like he's he's coming right under my stand, and he's he's straight under me, like straight down. Well, I mean, I'm probably you know twelve feet off the ground right there, or. Uh, yeah, about twelve feet. So he's he's four yards. Yeah, I mean he's right there, mm-hmm. three, and three and uh, a half yards. <laughs> so I aim straight down. I mean right through the center of his back, through his vitals, um, just to the just off to one side. I didn't aim for the spine per se. I just was aiming for the middle there, and uh, arrow goes through. Boom! Pops out the bottom. And right through his chest, and he runs. Which off. people think, or you would think, that that's a great uh, shot. deal. I thought, dead deer, dead deer. I just killed him. Yeah, and I watched him running. From the viewpoint I had, I could see him go about two hundred yards, and he was running, running, running. And he like stopped, and he looked around, and he ran around, and he stopped. Kid gave one last look and went over the hill. It didn't look like he was 
didn't look like he was hurting all that bad. And uh, so I'm like, how can that be that I watch this arrow <laughs> at 12 feet go straight through him? And I get down there and I check the arrow and it's got blood all the way through, but not a ton. I look on the ground, there's not a drop of blood anywhere. There's just no blood. Hmm. And uh, and then I looked for him for for like two weeks, and never found him. Yeah. Never found any blood at all, and I never saw him again. And I had he had been a regular. I'm pretty sure he died. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he died real slow. Yeah, half mile, mile away. Yeah, and when you find out, when you start studying, which I just didn't realize this at the time, when you take a shot straight down like that, it's a very low percentage shot um, because those those uh, those lungs hang vertical, you know, and they're like two flat pancakes in there. So you may not even even hit one lung. You may not have hit a single yeah. lung. And then if 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 you don't go right through the spine, the heart is beneath the spine. Yeah. And so are a lot of the arteries and yeah. and main. So it just went through nothing. Yeah. So it could have hit nothing, but it could have hit one lung, and yeah. and then then it's a slow death, yeah. or he could have survived from it. I don't know. All I know is uh, I never saw him again after that. And uh, it just, it, I was heart sick over that. Yeah, I and, bet. And I didn't know, like, like I'd never, I just assumed you aim for the heart. Well, after that, that's when I started studying shot angles, anatomy, what's, what's actually inside the body. Uh, where are those target points? And, uh, and started practicing from, from a tree stand at a decoy type target, yeah. 3D target, so I could see where where those vitals are yeah where that arrow needs to enter where it can exit it was a sad day yeah that's uh not anything you want to go through again i know that losing an animal sucks it's part of bow hunting it's part of hunting you know and then that's one of those things it's like you know a friend of mine told me he's like you're not going to kill anything unless you shoot you know and yeah. it's just all, all you can do is just try to make the most ethical yeah you got to prepare. You can do and and yeah. prepare and be the best you can be, and that's all anyone can ask of you, and that's all you can ask of yourself at the end of the day. I mean, don't care who you are, you're going to run into that situation at some point, you know, in in your hunting career. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a rough go. We've all been there. Um, any uh, advice for the blacktail hunter? Go around the let's go around the horn here. Colin? Uh, if you want to kill big bucks, only shoot big bucks. Don't shoot little ones and hold out. Always hold out. I, I would, I, I'd shoot a doe before I would shoot a little buck kind of a thing. And I think that people do the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's, it's all patience. It's grind and stay in the tree. Don't get down. Stick it out. Guys get, I don't know, so many guys are like, there's nothing moving. I'm getting bored. I'm going to go for a walk. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. After uh, watching uh, deer from a, from a tree stand as much as I have and uh, watching them detect um, a coyote or some kind of predator or a person from far away um, and, see, and seeing them interact with, hear each other. Mm -hmm. another deer coming in from a distance and they turn their head and they're, they're listening and that deer is coming in like silent. Yeah. After seeing that, I understand why you don't sneak up on deer <laughs> that often. Yeah. Uh, they just, it's so hard to still hunt. I think, it, it, I think that uh, it's brilliant to do it in the pouring rain. Yeah. Because it's just different. Yeah. That's, um, I I think the rain is what makes bucks uneasy. I think that's what makes them move. I mean, if if you knew some someone was chasing you around in the woods at that very moment, or there was a predator there, and all you can hear is rain on leaves, I would probably get up and be looking around and watching my back a little bit. And I think that's what yeah, they do. I think it's something like this. Like you notice, like when you go out in your tree stand, like I'm super silent. Uh, I'm uh I'm a ninja. Okay. <laughs> I'm a ninja, and I I sneak out there real quiet, and I got my little rubber boots on, you're right, and I'm going to my tree stand, and uh, I climb up in my tree stand, I get settled in, and I climb up like stealthy, 
man. And I get in there and I'm, um, I sit there and I think I have achieved greatness. Yep. I snuck in there and didn't scare or spook a thing. And I'm about two, three minutes in, I start to hear a bird chirp and then another bird chirp. And then, then I see a little squirrel come out. Yep. And 20 minutes later, there's just this raucous of squirrels and birds. And then an hour later, it's just going nuts. And there's critters running all around and stuff and birds flying through. And it's like, I didn't sneak up on crap, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't sneak up on crap. That whole forest knew I was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was like, okay, everybody, run and hide. Yeah. You know, and, and it comes alive after you sit there for a while. And I, I started to realize from that point. 15 or 20 minutes, I think, goes by from the time you get in the tree or the blind, and then it's back to normal. That's yeah. what I feel. Yeah, I, I agree. No matter how quiet you are or how well you sneak. And, and and think about that. If you're coming through the woods on a nice, clear day, it's like the forest go, just goes silent as you walk through it yeah. for a good hundred yard distance. Right? It's just announcing, "Deer, yeah. run, big buck." <laughs> yeah. There's someone in the woods. I mean, it's like the forest talks to these deer. Oh yeah, they yeah. know. They they read that stuff. I, that's why people will be like, "I heard something crash off," so I stopped. I'm like, "No, get your butt in your yeah. stand." And don't look back. Get in there and get quiet. That's the only and, thing you can do. The, and and I've noticed so you know back on that point, like I'll be I'll get in there and I'll try to be as quiet as I can. But I I realize that um, that forest talks to them, and oh, I yeah. think that when it's raining like that, that the forest shuts down. It's yeah. not there to sound the alarm bells. Yeah. They, they can't rely on it as a system of, yep. of, it's not saying something's not right here. It takes it away. Yeah. And so because of that, you can move through it in a way that they just, they can't leverage the force the way they normally would. I never thought about it like that. I like that theory as well. I mean, I've, I've observed bucks and does from the blind in the pouring rain mm-hmm. and they, they're skittish. They're skittish. Yep. They are, their ears, uh, you know, they're shifting and uh-huh. they don't like it, but they're out. I mean, yep. but you know, no, I've noticed the same thing in the pouring rain. They're, they're real jumpy. Oh you yeah. Know? They're always looking around. They're on edge. Mm-hmm. Although I've seen bucks in the pouring rain and they're just wandering like, Oh yeah. It's all cool, dude. During <laughs> the rut, they're just like, <laughs> I, I see bucks like that. And I'm like, how come I haven't stumbled on more bucks? <laughs> Cause they <laughs> seem to like, be clueless. I think a fully rutted buck com- com- completely yeah. loses his mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they, there's no common sense anymore. There's that like a two day period that you see a deer and like, what are yeah. you doing? <laughs> Eyes bulging out, <laughs> tongue out. Yeah. And he's just walking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've I've noticed, um, you know, sneaking, you know, with the forest being being sort of an alarm system for him that. I try really hard. Um, that's why I like tree stand hunting because then you you get there, you're a fly on the wall. Oh, yeah. And uh, you get to see and hear these critters moving you get around. A, yeah, you get it. I always say you get to see what's going on when you're not there. You know, when you're in the tree or the blind and everything's settled back down, basically that's what's going on when you're not there. You're not there. And that is a, that is just an amazing experience. Yeah, I, it's I'm not addicted all just. To it. Yeah, it's not just when the, I first started hunting tree stands like that, and and uh, it's an it was an evolution because when I first climbed into a tree stand, I sat down and I started listening. I'd sit there and go after about twenty minutes, a half hour, an hour, I'd be like, I'm bored out of my mind. I haven't seen a single animal. I've been oh, yeah. in the stand an hour, right? Yeah. Then I'm out on my phone. I'm listening to the radio. I'm throwing an audio book. I'm flipping through a book. I'm reading I'm anything to pass the time. My feet are cold. I'm hungry. It's like a fidget. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, fast forward 10 years later, I climb in the stand and it's like, I just watch. Yeah. Watch it all unfold. I just listen. And I don't want to listen to an audio book. I don't want to surf the internet. I don't want to be uh, distracted. I, it's like I'm zone, I'm in. I'm in the I'm in there and it's like meditation or something. I, I get to watch deer elk. If I don't see it, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm watching the squirrel or the bug or the 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 bird. It's like I really am I see things that I didn't used to see. Yeah, it's it's cool just being there observing. 
Yeah. You, I, I think you just see a lot of you see a lot of animals that you just don't you know you're there for deer you know that's what you're that folks that you forget about all the other stuff that's cruising through there all mm-hmm. the time too you know you see some yeah. fun stuff yep well my advice is um i i think that when you're out hunting blacktails you sort of need to do it on faith because you don't actually see them very often and so you just, it, it helps to have a game camera yeah, and to hang it in the area you've been. Huge. And it helps you understand that um, if you go to the foothills of the mountains, you know, and, and you throw up a, ca- a couple of cameras, you, you're like, okay, I've got a buck on camera once every seven days on average. Yeah. Right. It's hung for two weeks. I got two in a 14 day window. Yep. Okay. Well, when you know that, it sort of helps you manage expectations as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can sit there and go, okay, well, that means I could get lucky, and on day one, I could see a buck. Yep. But if I sit here seven days consecutively, yep. the odds are that I'm going to see yep. that a, that buck at least once, a buck at least once. That's my average. Year after year, I know now. Like, so far this year on my cameras, I haven't seen – a large buck, not one, which is really getting into my my head. You know, like, oh yeah, where are they? Same right? ball game, <laughs> and um, and it's really it's it's like, but I know from past experience that you know up through Thanksgiving and the weekend after Thanksgiving, there can be uh, like a three or four day window where I live where it can just be or where I hunt that can just be amazing and uh the last three or four years it's happened earlier you know where i've seen a lot of camera action or more bucks or at least throughout the season i've seen bucks maybe at night but so i just know that if i go and i put in my time you know if i try to sit as many days as i can in a for five six seven ten days if i've got it each day that that my odds of seeing a buck during get those better. days are better and better. Every time you go, your odds get better, regardless if you haven't seen one for five days, three days, seven days. The next time you go could be that day. And I used to worry. I used to worry that going in and going out, going in, going out, going in, going out would just wreck it, yeah. ruin the spot, spook the deer, make them so they don't come. You know, they know I'm there. Um, but what I found is it, it, uh, as long as I stay to my trail yeah, and I get into my, my, my set and I, and I leave kind of quietly and stay on my trail, I, it doesn't, it, they don't, they don't do that. They don't bust off. So mm. they, uh, they keep coming in. All right. What's your advice? Uh, my advice would be kind of what I've just learned and figured out is hang your cameras find what deer are in there pick out a deer an older deer and hunt that deer only been that rewarding oh yeah yep it's awesome i love it it's a little addictive oh it's you got absolute, a little obsessed didn't you oh yeah <laughs> no you know, i mean it's a goal you know but it's i don't know it's i don't know if it's conservation or what it is but you know just try to shoot old deer i do think that um you know if you haven't shot you know a lot of uh, deer shoot whatever you want whatever is legal yeah 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 whatever build makes you your, happy yeah build build yourself up you yeah know, absolutely to, but i think as as a natural evolution as a hunter Mm-hmm. You know, you, you you probably, even though you may say you never will, uh, it sort of happens over time. Like like I said, like my evolution in the tree stand from from being bored out of my mind to being, oh, yeah. to being like at one with nature and, and soaking it all in all day. Um, I'll take other people out there and to sit with me in the tree stand. And uh, it sort of drives me crazy because they don't appreciate it the I way know. I do. They get in the stand. I'm bored, man. Yep. How, long, how much longer do we Three have to sit here? Three hours. Time to go. I'm yeah. like, dude. I'm just. I'm in my. I'm loving every moment. I. I don't care. 
I could sit there just all day long. Yes. And I think that's I don't I, that's one of the things where I want someone to go hunting, but I realize they're not at the same place I am in life yeah. and in that in that thing and and uh so I I don't think they they um uh, get it like I get it, you know? But I want them to get there because it I see. Kind of goes back to uh, the part in your film about Anthony wanting it more for his dad than his dad wanted it. Yeah. I feel that same way a lot. Taking other people hunting, they're just not at that level yet. Or I don't know. I don't even know if it's a level. They're just not where you're at yet. Yeah. But yeah, I think you know, bringing meat home, killing an animal you know feeding your family and all that kind of stuff it's it's just a it's a remarkable experience once you've done it um it's hard to go back yeah uh at the same time um um it's no longer the only reason i i want to do it anymore yeah like like yeah. there's a there's a like we talked about it earlier offline if we don't kill a buck the buck we were looking for we're okay with that. Completely fine we're per- with it. Perfectly fine with that. We what we let a whole bunch of younger or some different bucks walk doesn't bother us at all. We're, no, because you still got to spend five days in the woods, ten days in the woods locally. I got to spend thirty six hunts in the woods last year, learning, watching, seeing these deer. It was awesome. Yeah, uh, I think there's something about it, man. Like we're built to like soak in. That that outdoors to be hunters to to just let our minds like tune into what's our surroundings and and uh, watch these things and uh, too much of the world is just not dialed in like that they're not yeah, folk, no. they're not uh, they don't they don't have the patience or the ability to sit there or, or the or the you know the peace that comes from that they they yeah. miss out on it. There's yep. something to be said about too about watching one walk away and just saying i could have <laughs> if i wanted to i could have done it you know that yeah. kind of i hear a lot of guys say oh i passed on this buck or that buck and i'm like did you really pass on them yeah, yeah. or did they walk in front of your camera and you saw i wouldn't shoot it if it was there <laughs> you know there's a big difference between the two and yeah. knowing that you've got everything there to make it happen and and having the control to say not your time yeah go on another day there's the that's what builds that respect there like that's like what he was saying with daddy earlier you know you 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 let him go enough times or you chased him enough times you've had this cat and mouse game and you set it up to for the perfect moment yeah you know and it's more meaningful i never let him go you never let him go (laughs) yeah (laughs) you just took him when you first time i saw him in (laughs) four and a half years yeah but i mean you know i'm saying that there's there's uh, yeah no that's how you build a relationship with uh, yeah absolutely with a buck like that yep absolutely probably the biggest piece of advice is don't let failure stop you from you know what you want to do and just be persistent shoot what gets you excited too you're jacked up about a fork and horn shoot them <laughs> and i'll say this you know we talked about how hard it is to hunt blacktails um it's easy to shoot a doe <laughs> it's easy to hunt a young doe and a spike buck i mean spike bucks i think are about the dumbest creature on earth <laughs> they're pretty they're close dude. They're, they're dumber they're, than a doe they're, they're, right. they're yeah. just dumb like uh, they're about the easiest buck uh, the b- animal to kill in the world i mean it's crazy how much uh that that little spike buck Mm-hmm. from whatever he is one one and a half to three and a half dude he gets smart in that two yeah, years we, we've talked Where about this go? like yeah. up to three and a half they're still sort of borderline yeah you know it's like they're so they're so killable up to three yeah and they're half. still killable and then at three and a half it's like they turn into super stealth ninja yeah like they disappear houdini uh, it's just um it's a whole different ball game when you're starting to deal with a four plus year old blacktail buck and uh i think that's why when i say shoot an older buck because i mean it's so rewarding yeah not only for the food the meat but just in a, a an accomplishment yeah i i i feel like you know um like i said i i don't i'm just i'm real happy to shoot a buck that's not one of my bucks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unless he's the biggest, baddest, oldest buck there. There, 
you know it's nice knowing you have fallback <laughs> that you deep down know you're never gonna fall back on <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm always like let's go to your place and hunt yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah let's check that spot out that you're telling me about uh, it's funny I, I have a hard time now after you know like you said uh, building relationships with them so anyway well, guys, I really appreciate you guys coming over. It's really late at night, by the way. It is. is. It? So we're we're all kind of punch drunk we're here. Uh, 12, but, 12, 15 a.m. Yeah, we're burning the oil now. <laughs> but I just, uh, I just, I, I really wanted to do this podcast. And uh, so Blacktail Outdoors, yep. you can find you uh, on blacktailoutdoors.com. Yep, and Facebook. Yep. We use Facebook a, a lot more than we do the web page and so on and so forth. And you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, yes, yes, do have a YouTube channel. Just kind of breaking into the YouTube. So we have a couple of videos that we have not finished up yet um, that as are ready. Soon, as soon as Colin's done having babies. Yeah, I keep <laughs> having kids. So you should come over to my place and I, we'll look at your videos. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've got, got we've four got, or five haunts ready yeah. to. Yeah, we've yeah, we've got kills and everything. We're just kind of. In yeah. limbo. I just got to stop having kids, I guess. So. <laughs> Man, loser. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, we've um, we've got some cool stuff lined cool. up that we're going to be putting out this year and got quite a bit of time to go into uh, this blacktail season coming up. We're really hoping to throw something special together for blacktails this year. Good. Yeah. Good. And is it September yet? Yep. Dot net. Dot net. Yep. All right. Check it out. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks appreciate for it, it, man. It was a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Stay gritty. <laughs> All right, friends. Thanks for listening and supporting the podcast. Don't forget about our deal with Mountain Ops. Type in the word gritty at checkout and get 20% off until the end of the year. For those of you who have not seen the Full Draw Film Tour this year and want to go, check out their website for their tour schedule. And if you haven't done so, Go and subscribe to our YouTube channel or to the Gritty Bowman TV podcast on iTunes or Podbean so you can see all the latest video content we have produced. And be sure to have a look at the new Elk 101 website where you can find our podcast and other great elk hunting content. Thank you for taking the time to leave us your feedback. We really appreciate your sincere support of our show. Finally, let me leave you with this quote by President Theodore Roosevelt, who in 1905 said, In a civilized and cultivated country, wild animals only continue to exist at all when preserved by sportsmen. The excellent people who protest against all hunting and consider sportsmen as enemies of wildlife are ignorant of the fact that in reality, the genuine sportsman is by all odds the most important factor in keeping the larger and more valuable wild creatures from total extermination. Friends, always take the time to educate those around you about your role as a hunter in preserving the wild creatures of this world. If you don't, who will? As always, good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty. Boom, man. <laughs>